Hey guys, in this part of our Node.js and Express application, we're going to create our project folder and we're going to initialize it with a package.json file, which is a manifest file with all the application info, uh, the name, the version, description, also the dependencies that it uses. Okay, because when you install uh, a node module for an application, it becomes a dependency. And listing them in this file makes it easy to transfer your application and, and then install all the dependencies uh, in just one command. All right, so we're also going to be installing Express, which is uh, a web framework, a back end web framework for Node. Now, it is possible to build uh, web applications with Node.js without something like Express. You could just use, uh, let's say, the HTTP client or, or HTTP module, but it's much more difficult. Because with Node.js, it's not like something like, let's say, Apache and PHP, where you have an Apache server that, that constantly runs and handles all your requests and all that, and then you just upload your PHP files. With Node.js, we actually have to handle, we have to manually handle the requests and the response. All right, uh, we have to, you know, handle the get requests and then uh, spit out a response and so on. So Express allows us to do that very, very easily and with uh, much, much less code. All right, and there's a whole bunch of other features that Express has as well. So this is the website if you want to read more about Express. Um, we're going we're to install it and all that, so you don't really need that. But there is a guide that explains more about like routing. Uh, for instance, if we want to handle a request to the home page, we can do app.get, because that's a get request, to slash, which is the home page. If we wanted to handle it to the about page, we could put slash about or something like that. And then once we define that, uh, that route or that um, request, we can put a function in and we'll have access to that, the request and the response object. And then we can use those in the function. All right. And when you submit a form, it's usually a post request and you can handle that with app.post. OK, but we'll get into that later. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to see how do I want to do this. I'm going to go to my C drive and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it projects. All right. And then in the projects is where we want to create our application folder. All right. So this is going to be a, uh, a knowledge base or, or an article database. So let's create a folder. I'm just going to call this. Um, let's call it node. KB node knowledge base. All right. So that's going to be the name of our app. And inside here we want to open a command line. Now, if you installed git bash, you can just right click and you can say git bash here. If you if you're on Windows and you're using the standard Windows command line, you can hold control and then right click. Uh, I'm sorry, shift and then right click and you can say open command window here. All right. So we're going to open up git bash. And I'm just going to make this a little bigger. All right. And then to create the package.json file I was talking about, you could manually create it, but an easier way is to use npm and you can do npm init. All right, and that will actually ask asks us some questions about our application. So first thing is the name. Whatever is in the parentheses will be the default if you just click enter. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Make this a little bigger. Okay, the version 1.0.0 is fine. Description will say simple uh, knowledge base app. Now the entry point is going to be the main uh, the main JavaScript file for Node. It's by default index.js, but I, I prefer app.js. And sometimes you may, might see server.js. All right, test command, we don't need that. We don't need that. Uh, keywords, author, feel free to put your own name in there. And then it's going to ask us if that's OK. We'll say yes. For some reason on Windows, this part hangs, so I'm just going to do a control C. All right. And then if we look in our project folder, you'll see package.json. So what we want to do now is open this node KB folder up inside of uh, our text editor. I'm using Atom and a nice little trick here is in, when you're in the command line, we can do Atom dot and that'll open it up in this folder. OK, in the project folder. OK, I'll move this over here. 
Okay, so it's also going to open up the welcome guide. We're just going to close this stuff up. All right, so here's our package.json file. Let's take a look at it. And it basically just has all the stuff that we entered when it asked us, asked us the questions, the name, version, description, and so on. You can also write little scripts with NPM to do certain things. Um, they give you this default test, uh, which is just going to echo no test specified, but you can, you can put things here. We're actually going to create a, um, a start script, which will just start our application. So now that we, we have this, let's uh, let's create our main file here. Remember, the main file we said was app.js. So let's say new file app.js. And then in here, uh, let's just do, we'll say console.log. And we'll just say hello world. If we save that, we go over here. We can say node and then the name of the file we want to run. So app.js. All right, and it just spits out hello world. Um, you don't have to add the extension. If we do node app, that'll do the same thing. All right, now when you build an application, you, you may have app.js, you may have index.js, server.js. So a good idea and, and what you'll often see is a script. Okay, so in here, we can actually get rid of the test. And let's say start. All right, and then in here, we want to basically just put the command we want that to run, which will be node app. All right. So now if we save that and we go over here and we say npm start, you'll say it'll it'll run the uh, it'll run that file. All right. Just like as if you said node app and you can see it actually does run node app. So what we want to do now is we want to install express, which is a, a node module. OK, so to do that, we're going to say npm install. And then we're going to add dash dash save. And what this does is it'll take whatever we install in this in this case express and it'll add it to dependencies in our package.json file. All right. So let's say install saved express. And it's also going to create a folder called node modules up here, and that's where all your um, all your packages, all your modules will go. And you can see here now we have Express and we have the latest version at this time, 4.15.3. OK, yours may be different depending on when you're watching this. So now what we're going to do is go into app.js and we want to bring in our Express module. So to do that, we're going to say let Express. And by the way, I'm using ES6 syntax, so I'm using let, but you can also use var. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm going to use const, OK, because this isn't going to change. And then we need to set it equal to require. And in here we're going to pass in express. OK, the name of the module. So next thing we want to do is we want to assign uh, a variable, let's say const app, and we're going to set that to express OK, to the express function. And this is all in the guide here. If we go to uh, let's see, that's just installing right here. So we're bringing in express. We're setting a variable called app to express. And now we can create routes. OK, so uh, let's go down here and let's say app. We're going to use that app variable and we're going to say get. So this will be a get request to slash to the home page. And then here we can put a function. Now we can do it like this or we can use ES6 syntax and use an arrow function. So you could go like that. Whoop. All right, but I'm going to stick to the just the function way because this is for beginners and you guys may not be, uh, you know, at the ES6 level. I mean, using const and let is, is simple, but uh, I don't want to get I don't want things to be too confused. So this function is going to take in a parameter of request and response, and we have access to both of these objects. So what we want to do is uh, let's just say uh, res dot send. OK, so we're taking the response and we're calling a function called send, which will just basically send something to uh, to the browser. So in here, let's just say hello world. Now, this alone isn't going to do anything. We need to actually uh, we need to call the listen function. OK, so down here, let's say app dot listen. And then this is going to take in the port. OK, if we look over here, it's going to take in the port number. Uh, usually it's 3000. 
we actually don't want quotes. All right, so 3000. And then this also takes a callback if we want to run something after we, we listen. So let's just do a console.log and we'll say server started on port 3000. All right, so just this code here should run. So let's go over to our command line here and let's clear this out. And then we should be able to do npm start. And now it, uh, it's going to ask for firewall access. We'll just click allow. And then it says server started on port 3000. OK, and since we have this route, we should be able to go over to localhost port 3000. And there it is. Hello world. All right. So now that we have Express installed and we know how to create routes and start our server up in the next video, we're going to get into um, templating and I'll show you how to install Pug, which is a template engine. And we'll start to create some views. All right. So I will see you in the next video.